Now we shall see the definition of what is called a topological embedding. Topological embedding. Okay, so what does it say? It says that if I have a function, so informally speaking, I'll write the formal definition. If I have a function f from a topological space x to a topological space y, which is injective, right? And if z denotes uh, f of x, which is the range of f, then if I define, uh, then if I define the same map f dash, same map, okay, if I define a new map f dash from x to z, by the same rule as there in f, then uh, this function will be a bisective function, right? This function will be a bisective function. So the case is something like, uh, if I have a map from a subset of n, to another subset of n like this which is injective so suppose the function is defined like this then here the z uh, the set z will be uh, the set containing 1 2 3 and 4 it, it is a range set suppose this is a this is b now if i define a new map f dash by the same rule as there in f but i i am restricting the codomain so the now the codomain set will contain only four elements those are, those are the elements of z so i'm defining a new map f dash by the same rule as there in f but by restricting the codomain set so then then uh, this map uh, takes 1 to n 2 to 2 3 to 3 4 to 4 to 4 because the rule is the same as f now since f is injective so therefore f dash will be bisective this is the idea so then f dash from x to z will be a bisective function and suppose f is continuous also suppose this is continuous also then f dash will also be continuous right if f is continuous then f dash will be continuous because rule is the same domain set is the same right so therefore same as f so therefore f dash is also continuous so f dash is continuous and bisective so therefore for f dash to be a homeomorphism from x to z what should be what is that only which what is that what is that which we require if if f dash inverse is also continuous then we can say that f dash is a homeomorphism from x to z so let us assume that f dash inverse is continuous. It may not be continuous in general, but we are assuming that suppose f dash inverse is continuous. This implies f dash inverse is a sorry f dash is a homeomorphism from x to z. F dash is a homeomorphism, right? So in that case, in that case, if f dash happens to be a homeomorphism of x with z, then in that case we say that the function f is a topological embedding, or we simply say that it is a it is an embedding of x in y. Okay? We simply say that it is an embedding of x in y. So, so let me write the definition formally. Of topological embedding okay so suppose that suppose that f from x to y is an injective continuous map Suppose it is an injective continuous map. What are x and y? x and y are where x and y, these are topological spaces. These are any two topological spaces. Suppose that z be the image set 
what was that f of x right so if we consider z as a subspace so here we consider z as a subspace of y so i which i forgot to mention so it is considered as a subspace of y so to talk about homeomorphism i should have a function between two topological spaces then only i can say whether the, i can think of whether the function is homeomorphism or not okay so therefore uh, therefore the so whether f dash is homeomorphism or, or not to ask this question we should uh, make sure that both the sets uh, uh, with the domain and codomain subset of domain and codomain sets uh, of f dash are topological spaces or not so for that x is already a topological space we have to make z a to topological space so that we do uh, by considering z as a subspace of y so suppose z be the image set fx considered as a subspace of y then what we have observed is that uh, then then the function f dash which is defined from x to z just by restricting which is obtained by restricting the range of f it will be bisective all right so this will be bisective now if f dash happens to be homeomorphism then okay homeomorphism of x with z then we say that the map f from x to y is a topological embedding or we simply say that it is uh, it is an embedding of x in y or simply an embedding embedding whatever of x to y x in y sorry embedding of x in y so this is the definition of topological embedding all right So now let us see certain examples of homeomorphism between two topological spaces. So example, let me call it as one. If uh, f from let us say R to R is a function which is let us say given by f of x is equal to 3x plus 1 for all x in r r is a topological space with respect to the standard topology okay so suppose i have a function from r to r which is given by this okay now the question is is f homeomorphism or not so for f to be homeomorphism we should make sure that f whether f is bisective or not we should make sure that f is bisective if is continuous and its inverse is also continuous if f is not bisective we are done we can we can easily conclude that it is not a homeomorphism okay now let us check whether f is one one or not so we try to see whether f is bisective or not so so let us first check whether f is one one or not for that if uh, x1 comma x2 are the points in the domain set such that uh, with, the, with with such that f of x1 is equal to f of x so we want to so that x1 is equal to we want to check whether x1 is equal to x2 or not so what does it imply it implies that 3 of x1 plus 1 is equal to 3 of x2 plus 1 you can cancel this two out you can cancel 3 also this implies x1 equal to x2 okay hence it is 1 1 hence f is 1 1 what about on 2 so is function f on 2 so 
For that, let us pick an element y belongs to R. Suppose uh, y is there in R, which is in the codomain subset of codomain set uh, of F. Then I want to produce an element in the domain set such that its image uh, is exactly its image under the map F is exactly uh, y. So let us take x is equal to uh, so suppose y minus one over three. Right. This is a real number. Now if I look at uh, f of x what will be this it will be 3 times y minus 1 over 3 plus 1 this is exactly y so therefore for y in r i have produced an element in r if i have produced an element in the domain set for an element in, for arbitrary element in the codomain set i have produced an element in the domain set whose image under the map f is y hence f is on to I proved that f is 1, 1 and also on 2, hence f is bisective. This is okay. <sighs> right. So let me do the rest of rest part here only. So what does this imply? This implies that f is bisective because it is 1, 1 and on 2. f is let me write on 2. It implies f is on 2. So right these two shows that f is bisective okay next is uh whether let us check whether f is continuous or not clearly it is continuous because it is a so why it is continuous because uh it is a It is a function which is polynomial and we know that from our real analysis course every polynomial function uh, is continuous okay and here uh, since continuity of a function in a topological space not only depends on the function but also uh, that also it depends on the topologies but uh, there whatever we studied uh, in the real analysis course course all uh, was with the standard topology because of which f is continuous as so i can give an argument that f is because standard because i am considering r with the standard topology so as f is a polynomial function so so we prove that f is continuous also so now since f is bijective so i can talk about f inverse so f inverse is a mapping from again r to r it is defined by f inverse of say y suppose if i call f inverse as z then z of y will be so it will be 1 over 3 1 minus y minus 1 right 1 over 3 y minus 1 why because we have fx as 3x plus 1 if i denote fx by y then y will be 3x plus 1 so this implies x will be y minus 1 over 3 so therefore the function inverse function is defined like this for every y in r all right so also again this is a this is a polynomial function right so so therefore by the family result from calculus this is also continuous so i, I proved that a function is bijective it is continuous and its inverse is continuous hence f is a F is a homeomorphism. Okay. You can see some more examples also of a homeomorphism between topological spaces. So, for example, I'll not go, I'm not going to prove it, but as an example too, I can consider the function say capital X which is defined from minus 1 comma 1 to R so defined by say f of x is equal to 
x over 1 minus x square for all x in the interval minus 1 comma 1 this is a homeomorphism f is clearly continuous because it is of the form uh, small fx by small gx where gx is not equal to 0 for all x in uh, the domain set and we know that if that is the case then the ratio of two continuous function is continuous so therefore using that i can say that f is continuous you can show that it is bisective and inverse is also continuous to uh, to prove our claim to verify our claim that it is a homeomorphism so the uh, the verification i want to leave you as an exercise simple right you have to check whether it is con continuous or not you have to check whether it is bisective or not and its inverse is continuous or not just check it okay you can give graphical argument also okay all right so next uh, we'll talk about the uh, we'll talk about how to construct continuous functions so constructing continuous functions for example we know that every from our real analysis course every constant function uh, every constant function is continuous right? and also from our real analysis course we know that every identity function is continuous every not identity function is continuous let us say right identity function is continuous every constant function is continuous and composition of two continuous function is uh, is continuous that we know from our real analysis course what about in a topological space is it true right is it true so the the answer to all those question is given by the following theorem which also gives us a, a rule for constructing continuous functions okay so theorem which gives us the rule for if somebody asks you to construct given two topological spaces x and y if somebody asks you to construct a function f from x to y which is continuous then just by using the rule which uh, i'm going to discuss you can construct so let us discuss the rule for constructing continuous functions okay so suppose i start with the topological spaces three topological spaces suppose x y and z suppose these are topological spaces then if f from x to y is a function which maps all uh, the points of x into a single point of y into a single point y0 of y i'm actually saying that the function is a constant function it is a constant function between topological spaces constant function then f is continuous identity function between topological spaces is not necessarily continuous you have seen an example of a function between topological spaces r and rl and uh, uh, which was not continuous right if i uh, if i just interchange the domain set then in that case the function will be continuous that 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 is the example which we have already seen so identity function uh, between topological spaces is not necessarily continuous right that was the kind of very strange uh, thing which we observed between which we, which we observed uh, which we observed in this course so it says that every constant function between topological spaces is continuous that is what it says 
The second uh, says that it says the following. What does the B part of the theorem says? It says that if you have a function from a topological space x to y, sorry, let us, uh, okay, suppose that uh, you have a topological space x and suppose that A is a subset of x and uh, we can then we can also consider A as a topological space with respect to a subspace topology. So if A is a subspace of x, then if I define a function z from say a to x by z of x is equal to x, right? z of x is equal to x. And then this function is called the inclusion map, right? This is called the inclusion map. Then in that case, the function will be continuous. Here I'm not not taking uh, these these. So, okay, okay, so this is what the uh, second part of the theorem says. Okay. It says that so this is about the inclusion. It says that if A is a subspace of X, if A is a subspace of X, the inclusion function, the inclusion function which uh, j from say a to x is always continuous okay third okay let me go to the next slide so third says that if f is a function from x to y and z is a function from y to z we know that uh, in in case of from from real analysis course, we know that if I have two continuous functions, continuous real valued functions, which is defined for, suppose one function is defined from a subset of R, say x to a subset another subset of R, say y, and another function is defined from y to z, then their composition is also continuous, right? And the similar kind of thing is true for the functions between topological spaces. So if f is a map from x to y and z is a map from y to z, if these are continuous, if these are continuous, then, then the map z compose f, f, so it is a map from x to z, this is continuous. So it says that the composition of two continuous functions between topological spaces is com continuous. So this talks about the composites. This talks about the composites. Next, uh, next we talk about, next uh, D says, talks about the restriction, right? So it says that if F is a function from a topological space x to a topological space y which is continuous and if a is a subset of x then i can consider a as a subspace of x so right i can consider a as a subspace of x so suppose a is a subspace of x and f is a function from x to y which is continuous then if i restrict the function f to a then it will be a map from a to y right if i restrict the map f from uh, if I restrict the map f to a, then it will be a map from a to y. The rule is the same, but uh, we have restricted the, restricted the domain set. Then this is always continuous, right? This is always continuous. So it talks about the restricting the domain. which says that if f from x to y is continuous, if it is continuous and if a is a subspace of x, 
then if I restrict uh, the map f to the subspace a of x then it will be a map from a to y this is always continuous this is what d says e part of the theorem says that okay what is the e part of the theorem says informally i'll tell and then i'll write suppose i have a map f from x to y which is continuous and if z is a subspace of y uh, suppose if z is a subspace of y which contains the range of f so suppose this is the range of f suppose it is denoted by say so suppose it is denoted by fx this is the range of f and suppose z is a subspace of y which contains the range of f so suppose this is z right right sometimes if fx is equal to y then you can then the possibility for z is y only possibility of z will be y only if the function is on to if the function is not on to then then there may be more than so if the function is not on to then at least two possibility for z will be there all right okay So if f is a function from x to y and f, fx is the range of f and z is the subspace of y which contains the range of f then what does the e part says? It says that if I define a function g from x to z so see I am just restricting the uh, range of so what I am I'm doing here is I am just uh, restricting the function f to z basically i am defining the same function f i am defining whatever the rule is there in f i am defining uh, by the same rule but not from x to y i am defining from i am defining a map z from x to z okay by the same rule f so then uh, one can easily see that uh, this function will also be continuous if f is continuous uh, then uh, with all these uh, required hypothesis then i can say that g is also continuous how we have obtained g is clear no okay next the same e part also says that so this is the first uh, part of e so the second part of e says that so let us see what does it says if z is the space which uh, contains y as a subspace the situation is something like this we have the same function f uh, from x to y suppose z is the space Suppose we have one more topological space, say z, which contains y as a subspace. Okay, z is the topological space. Now, what I can do is, if I expand the function, if I expand the codomain set of the function f. Okay, so for example, for example. Suppose I have a function from, so this is for the example, for the sake of example. Suppose this is y, this is x, this is z. So suppose 1, 2, 3, 4 is there, 1, 2, 3, 4 is there. So suppose the map is something like this. And suppose in z we have 6, 7. Now I define a map h. Suppose I define a map h from x to z by 1, 2, 3, 4, 
one, two, three, four, five, six will also come here. No, I'm, I'm just expanding the codomain of F and I'm defining a new map H from X to Z. But, but, uh, but here we cannot randomly, you know, define map like this one goes to five and so on. Wh wherever one goes, wherever one takes the element, wherever F takes the element one under H also F has to take one to the same element. So F this goes to this, this goes to this, this goes to this, this goes to this. Right. Now for five and six, there will be no uh, pre image in this case. But if I have a say five, six, seven, and, and suppose, yeah, if I have more elements in the domain set, such that five goes to four, say six goes to four, seven goes to four, then uh, if I expand, in that case also, One cannot have one, a single element cannot have two images, no? So, yeah, so forget about that, but, uh, but expanding is clear, no? So, so we are just expanding. So we are just defining a new map H from X to Y such that h of x is equal to f of x y x to z such that h of x is equal to f of x then uh, this function is going to be also continuous this function is also going to be continuous this is the second part of e says so let me write Let me write this statement. So it talks about the restricting or expanding the range. Restricting or expanding the range. So suppose f is a function from x to y, which is continuous. And if Z is a subspace of Y, which contains uh, the image set FX, then the function Z from X to Z, this is continuous. So how we have obtained this, this is uh, obtained by restricting the range of f is continuous. And also if uh, z is a subspace, z is a space having y is a subspace, having y as a subspace then uh, the function say h from x to z which is obtained by expanding uh, the range of f is continuous this is what uh, the e part of the theorem says we have one last statement one last rule for constructing continuous function. So if I have a, so what does it say? It says the following. If I have a map f from x to y, then uh, where x and y are topological spaces, the, and if it is true that okay, if I have a map f from x to y, where x and y are topological spaces since x is an element of topology okay uh, 
uh, sorry so if i have a map f from x to y then uh, we say that f is continuous if x can be written as say the arbitrary union of open sets u alpha where alpha is in say some index set c so wherein each alpha is an open set in x and also such that if i restrict the same map f to each u alpha and if it, this is continuous for each alpha in a set z then these two together implies f is continuous so this is what the f part of the theorem says it says that if I have a function f from x to y, where x and y are topological spaces, and if x can be written as the union of open sets like this, and also if it is further true that if I restrict the same function f to different open sets, which appears here, all the open sets which appears here, and if if restriction of each, each if if the restriction for if restricted function on each u alpha is continuous for each alpha in the index set z then we can say that f is continuous so this is what the uh, f part says so it says that if you check that uh, if if it is true that x is uh, suppose this is x and if it is true that x is the union of all these open sets say all these are open sets and uh, suppose this is y suppose this is f now you just define suppose this is a1 this is a2 this is a3 and so on suppose if you if you restrict the same function f to a1 such that then in that case it will be a map from a1 to y defined by the same rule as f if this is continuous and if it is if it is true that f restricted on a2 such that it is a map from a2 to y if this is continuous and, and if it's if the same is true for each a alpha for its restricted map a alpha f restricted over a alpha for its alpha in say z which is an index set if th if this is continuous then i can say that map itself is continuous so this is something called a local formulation of continuity right local formation formulation of continuity so this is the local formulation of continuity so i think i'll discuss the proof in 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 my next lecture including the proof of pasting lemma so it says that the map f from x to y it is continuous if x can be written as the union of open sets u alpha such that f restricted on each u alpha is continuous for each alpha in for each alpha let us say okay. so the proof of all these uh, statements uh, I, I i'll discuss in the in my next lecture so with this i want to stop i think the statement is clear its statements uh, its statement is clear to you in the next lecture i'll discuss pesting lemma proof of this result and i'll talk about the pesting lemma and also if i i get sufficient time then i'll talk about maps into products okay With this, I'll stop.